Hi, I'm Steve Maletto from the Teaching, Learning, Leading K-12 podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. iOS, you're probably really familiar with this because they're the best at making things so clean and so easy. No, shut up. Don't even. Um. <laughs> we're, bringing, we're bringing a name yes. To, yes. to the tank. Yes, um, the tank the class has a name. It, let's call it Philosophy of Tank. Welcome to the High Tech Podcast. This is your host, William Millingworth, joined by your other host, Josh. I did it. It's me. He made it. I jumped in. Yeah, I got there. Let's look at that. Well done, sir. Perfect. Uh, we are back for another week, another set of shenanigans. We've already had a little bit of fun this evening, uh, a couple of yeah, recording a mishaps. Bit of, a little bit of, a little, a little of hijinks, you could say. A high-tech you know? hijinks. Hijinks, yes. You could you could say it like that. Yeah. As always, just want to remind you, find us on Twitter at High Tech Podcast. Full name. Love that. But then, yeah. if you want to send us any emails, requests for interviews, ideas images if you would uh you can send those yeah. to inbox at hightechpod.us dot us mm-hmm. is sure it's how the kids are pronouncing it this, <laughs> these days <laughs> you know i don't identify with the kids i i know clearly uh what what, what um, picture are we send in this week my friend yeah what picture are we send in this week um so here's here's what i'm feeling work with me okay oh, working holding ant eater I'd like a picture of an ant eater. Okay. If you're listening to this episode, All right. send us a picture. I, uh, guys, I gotta be honest here. Okay, we we haven't gotten a lot of pictures. Okay, <laughs> we did get a parrot. Like, we we did. Yeah, we we got one, and that was from technically technically two if you count my wife's picture. But I don't really. She sent your wife she, sent two now. Yeah, but she like so we're up to okay, three. So technically three. It's not that I don't count her. It's. Just not in this case. Um, we, we, we yeah, let's got, not touch that. I don't want to. So we got, we got, we got Sam, one real picture. We love you, Sam. <laughs> yeah. One real picture. So I need you. I need you to step up the game here, guys. Get us some and girls photos and all peoples, all peoples, all animals, all things of all sizes. Yes, Once if you're, you're an anteater that listens to us, send us a picture of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> send us an anteater selfie. Yes. Once you're done with those fun things and our general shenanigans, shenanigry, I don't know if that's a word, uh, uh, head no, over to <laughs> hightechpod.us, our website, where Us. you can find all of our pages, all of our resources, all of our last episodes. Make sure to share those with friends, but you can also get to all of the fun things like Apple, yeah, Google, Spotify, etc. Hey-oh. Yeah. That was a good way to say that. Yeah, it was nice. Hey, Will, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, who, who, who can you find at our website? Who, do, who, who do you find there? Apple, Google. No, 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 no. Like, do you, do you find us? Are we there? Sure. Yeah. You, oh. You, okay. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Snap! Wow, you got me. You got me. I win. <laughs> Nope, nope. Head over to hightechpod.us, not .us, and you will find us there. We should start a poll on this. Side note. There we go. <laughs> anyway. Using our hashtags. This week, we are talking about none other than the most nerdy concept to designers. Like, if you're a designer and you haven't heard of this or Addy, you're probably not a designer. Uh, we've we've bringing the topic of cognitive load. Right, Josh? Ooh. Yeah, I didn't read the wrong Exciting end of the episode topic. notes. We're at the nope, right. No, we thing. got the right one this, this is time. Perfect. I, I was just, I was just engaged. Uh, oh, he was by watching. talking about cognitive load. Yeah, it was not that you got the wrong episode. Uh, cognitive load is a learning theory. It's a cognitive theory. Uh, it comes probably out of psychology first, and then we have uh, hijacked it and used it in design theory. Uh, but it's very hijacked important it. when it comes to the fact that our work. Designers' works, technologists' work takes place almost exclusively in a digital world. 
right? Yeah. Uh, cognitive load applies to the real world. It applies to things you see in your life. It, it's 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 something about how you perceive everything. But we need this for work now. Before I get any more vague than I already have been, <laughs> Josh, you know what is cognitive load in in your terms and your idea? In your terms, you, what well, you want to say is in the simpleton term. No, I'm just joking. Um, yeah, I mean, no, I'm just because <laughs> my background's not from this area. That's my joke. Oh, fair, fair, um, fair. That yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, like the the way I would. I put it for people without getting into all like the crazy details. And we'll talk about the different types that there are. Um, but the, where I really think I get down to this is like, if you've ever said the word, like said the, the phrase I'm overloaded a bit like that, I think is the simple way of us like identifying this concept of cognitive load. Um, at least when it comes from like a learning concept and, and the way that it works. Um, but uh, just the idea of like too much, having to deal with too much and process too much at, at the same time. And this, I think sometimes gets like the, there's a perception when we're talking about cognitive load, where we're just like, we're just talking about the amount of content or things that are given to people, but that's not the case. Like cognitive load is talking just in general, the experience, right? So like the reason it comes up and it's such a nerdy thing for IDs or instructional designers um, and people who work in learning design is that, it's not just that it's, it's the idea of like, how much are you asking someone to think about or process all at the same time? How many different things are you asking them to do or process at the same time? And it's this idea that we can only handle so much of what it is. And it's not that like thinking of having too much to think about is a bad thing. Sometimes it's just that we want to like, we want to focus people um, and we don't want to overwhelm them in certain areas. And where I think this comes up for me a lot is not just in how much content we're asking them or how many different, like if we have an activity that's asking them to do seven different things, how many different things we're asking them to do, but also just like a, like how busy is the page? How crazy is what they're looking at right now? Um, are you asking them to use like six different tools to do what they're doing? Like all of these things can kind of come together into this concept of cognitive load and can create, uh, if we're not careful, create this feeling of overload or overwhelmedness. That's a, Thing, sure sure maybe. it is now sure i don't know you you get to make up words so do i Fair. um so <laughs> um but that's the, for me that's kind of what this means like the it's a very high level view of how this interacts with what we're doing so would you agree yeah no I, I i love that and like a couple of quick examples that i think will make this very clear to folks who may not be familiar have you ever looked at someone's powerpoint and went <gasps> Like you just died inside when you saw it <laughs> yeah. or uh, that PowerPoint from 1999, right? Where it had the yeah. swoosh am animation, the words all wiggled in am the background animation. with a, with a gif in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. There's six colors from left to right. You know, you know, we're talking about people, that person that just gave you a PowerPoint yesterday that looks like they just discovered word art was the thing. Exactly. Okay. Like that's, yep. that's what we're, we're, we can be referring to. So that it's would not be an example of, of, of an overload there are too many things on the screen your mind your brain you is is um processing all of that information and the more things that are there the less effective the message is be, you know that's being communicated and it's less likely that the person receiving it will be able to remember it another good example uh to, to try and like visualize or conceptualize cognitive load think about some of your favorite apps if you're using even you know, if you use iOS, you're probably really familiar with this because they're the best at making <laughs> things so clean and so eat. No, shut up. <laughs> Don't even. Um, <laughs> yeah, iOS does a pretty good job with like they and, and Apple. They want their clean lines. They want their their yeah. smooth app design. They want their smooth interfaces. And yet their settings areas is the worst I've ever seen. But um, <laughs> but before I continue bashing iOS. I'm looking at an app right now that when I click it, right, it loads a white screen with just a, a, a blue logo of theirs, nothing else. It asks me to authenticate, and then it goes right through. And then once I'm in the app, the overall main components are it, of it are uh, half blue page, half black page, all white text, one menu icon, a logo, and then an interaction button. So altogether, there's, there's not truly too many elements there. But visually, what I know as I look at it is top top half, I can ignore that right now if that's not what I need. Bottom half is like looking through my 
what I've done in the app and my information so I can go I can go look right there and if I want to do something more new in it I hit that bottom right hand button like that's a one two three response to the app I'm not overloaded by too many points of information I don't have 16 colors and two fonts and the yeah. right I told you it's blue black one white font one interaction mm -hmm. button that's an example, I think, of a good app that has reduced the cognitive load for the user. I don't have to think too much. I don't have to process too much of what's present. Yeah. I can just respond to the app when I see it, when I use it. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of the question and the, the call on designers when it comes to uh, online learning. Like We want to make sure that when you land on a learning page, the content you see is relevant, is immediate, is useful. Mm-hmm. And if yeah, it's absolutely. not those things, and I'm not saying that's not like a one, two, three list of like the perfect thing for cognitive load, right? But that's yeah. just me processing. Like if, if you are adding too much to a page, you will soon defeat your purpose of communicating or teaching um, and you'll lose your learner. You know, they, they get yeah. caught in things and it can really negatively impact what goes on yeah. in the learning process. And, and that's like the user experience concept that fits in with cognitive load. I think that's why there's like, there's a reason that like when it comes to learning design people, cause I kind of just using that term, I think we've used this before in, in the podcast, I use that term to kind of just like encompass a whole bunch of groups of people that fall into this area. Cause there's a lot of different roles that, that end up in this world that Will and I live in. Right. Right. Um, and the reality is that the reason user experience and UX design and all that stuff is kind of converged with learning design and what's going on is because they're doing a lot of the same stuff, which is that they're, they're trying to create simple experiences that are focused and you're not adding too much. Like you're not creating when you land on a page or an assignment or whatever it may be, or a, a lesson that it's clear what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it, what you're supposed to interact with. And you're not being bogged down with a lot of busyness or, um, unnecessary information or information that you don't need just yet. And that there's a fine line to find in that area. And it's not always the same for every, every page or assignment. It's not like, it's like, Oh, we've, and some people go this extreme where they're like, well, yeah, you got, you got 13 words there instead of 12. And we said 12 only. <laughs> right. It's like, well, it's like, it's like, well, yeah, but okay, I need breathe. 13. I can have a 13th word like, today. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> like, like, I need 13 to describe this. Um, and that's like a ridiculous example, but it's the reality of it is, is this is not like a science where it's like as hard and fast um, yeah. rules to it. It's kind of one of those things where like it, the situation depends on how cognitive load plays out. Now, the other thing I would throw out there to how, co how this fits with cognitive load, and then will, I'd love for you to like, let's break down the three versions. Right. So, um, but just another idea of where this, this plays into it is I don't think it's just the page and the design and the way it looks. It's also about, what you're asking the student to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like if we're talking about a learning experience, it's like I've had people design assignments where like they're okay. So there's a uh, activity or the person will go unnamed. Um, and uh, I'm, it's a dangerous thing to do this on the podcast, man. Cause if this person listens, they're going to know I'm talking about them. Um, but uh, this is, they, they design this activity and it's like, the students need to log into here, start this thing, this meeting, record this, log out, come back in, do this type of thing. And the the subject matter expert or the instructor or faculty member who's asking them to do this is like, it's building out this whole thing of what the students are going to need to do. And at the end of the day, I'm afraid this is going to be an overloading assignment because they're going to be dealing with five different places they go and come out of before they even actually get to doing the content and the thing that they're supposed to do. Like, and then on top of that, they're going to have to do the respond to these questions with each other, with a partner. Will it's a group assignment. Um, they're going to have to do it with two people. Okay. Jump in and out of their meeting, come back into another person's meeting um, and then do it with that person. Okay. And then they have to get the link for the video, submit that link. I stopped to the thing that they have to do like six steps like, ago. Like, yes. Okay. <laughs> like, and <laughs> no thing is perfect, but it's like, that has so many steps, right? So many things. And, and we deal with this all the time. Like we have to write guidance for people on how to do stuff. Like, uh, and my point is always, I've, I've made these mistakes. I've written guides before on how to do like video recording. That's like 13 steps long. And it's like, I was an idiot. I mean, like, it's like they're gonna have to go in and out of this place. They're gonna have to do this and this and that. That is one of those things where it's the point is 
cognitive load theory says like they're going to get to a certain point where they just can't take any more of it right. and they're going to miss steps they're not going to understand it or they're just going to get frustrated and stop or they're it's just going to be a bad experience it's right. not going to work yeah it, it, it um, really so emphasizes the, example. the breakdown like it's just ugh. yeah um and that's where you know the, the point of getting into some of the definitions of the types of of cognitive load helps to imagine the good things to do and the good things to watch for sadly you know like these examples we're using so far really kind of stem from the negative like what not to do but there you go hand in hand now one of the other things that that's really interesting to me about actually leading into the types in just a second about the um the design of online learning and things like that like what you said the 12 words and 13 words like i've i've found folks then who say, oh, the page itself has to have as, as little content on it as possible initially, and then there can be some exploration, people can grow to more. So what ends up happening is they'll take a thousand words and put like 250 words under a button, show hide, right? And then another 250 words and put them on another button, show hide. So it's still a thousand words, right? But oh, now yeah. a student has to click a button, show, to see the other 250 words. Like yeah. you haven't changed the cognitive load of the page. The cognitive load of the page is now sequenced, maybe, like they're going to perceive certain bits at a time, but the overall impact of the page is where this becomes relevant to types, right? There is something called intrinsic, extraneous, and germane cognitive load. These are the three types of load that people define uh, under this overall theory. And in a germane cognitive load, we are actually looking to have students retain knowledge. The point of a germane cognitive load is it's this is this um, it's I don't want to say a balance or a quota, but it's the amount with which people are going to be able to learn and retain. Like once you get to a certain mm -hmm. point of germane, you go too far with information and they can't keep anymore. A thousand words is too many, whether you put it at a 500, 250, 250 or 1,000 all at one time, right? Like putting them behind buttons does not make it more effective at a germane cognitive load level. <clears throat> whereas... Oh, we're coming back to this because I got I got some thoughts. Whereas uh, in, so, in right. intrinsic cognitive load, I really like this is the... It's, it's about inherent difficulty, right? Like if you're thinking mathematics, addition is always in a sense easier than multiplication. Now, that's an intrinsic cognitive load. The value of multiplication is is a harder load to co accomplish mm -hmm. than um, than addition. So if you were thinking about that page of a thousand words, the intrinsic issue there may be: is it high? Is it high context and and high jargon mm -hmm. language? Yeah. Is it high expertise? Then it's already going to be harder than if it was just a children's story in a thousand words. Yeah. So there the intrinsic value doesn't have anything to do with whether, you know, the germane value, right? Like the germane value may yeah. just be, can they retain it at all? Well, that's going to depend on, is it a children's story or is it a yeah. PhD's level dissertation on and virus distribution? Where this gets more complicated is like, it, it also depends. I think it depends on the person, right. like the, the learner that you're working with. Like, um, like if it's PhD level and we're designing a course for kindergartners, there's there's a problem there uh, because it's <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're, they're not going to remember even the first word we said. Um, like that's there's there's this con it's just the how the learner interacts with also affects this. Like how much cognitive how much of this is acceptable, what the steps are up to it are. Like there's it's it's not a simple concept. Like people throw cognitive load around all the time and i do too right we throw it around like oh it's cognitive load issue and we're like yeah you know like that's <laughs> i said a design word oh um, well, and, and in that so way like... it's like a it's like it's almost like a slap like psh, i'll just throw a cognitive yeah. load stamp on that and i can ignore it like no nah, well see... yeah we can get rid of that uh, yeah so like it's it's complicated anyway sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there no 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 it's totally totally fine because like that is why i think it's worth talking about the different types and, and, and understanding it a mm -hmm. little bit better because when you look at if, if you're trying to communicate something to your students and it's 1000 words you have three levels that that can go wrong <laughs> like i don't you know it's not perfect regardless right but at an intrinsic yeah. level the issue of those a thousand one thousand words is um is it high technical jargon or is it a children's story is it 
mathematical in nature? Is it literature? Like all these things dip, impact mm -hmm. how you are going to learn and what the value of those 1000 words are. The germane load element is like, well, are they intended to learn that and remember it? So what's the value and impact of like word for word? Do they need to know where every um, um, article is and every preposition and every verb and like that's the germane load to it. And then the extraneous load really is about that button thing, right? Like it's about the actual environment and presentation of the content and what is the extraneous or the outside load on mm -hmm. reading this 1000 words. So uh, is the font so big that they have to scroll two or three times just to go down a sentence? You know, is is the font so small that they have to get a magnifying glass out to read it? Is the font chunked up into all these little buttons all over the page and they have to figure out how to get navigate between all the buttons to read all the text, mm -hmm. right? These are the things that get in the way of learning, you know, whether it's yeah. intrinsic, extraneous, or germane. We have to be aware that any one of these three areas or all three of these areas could be a problem for our learners trying to get mm -hmm. this information. And these are the problems we're trying to overcome. And it, the reason it ends up being such a hot topic in learning design, where we often are designing things for an online or some type of like hybrid blended experience is because online in itself carries some very unique ways that this plays out and issues that we deal with. Like to your point, well, like let's, let's just, let's run with this example for a second. Okay. Let's deal with these three issues. Let's run with this example. We got a page of a thousand words for TAT 101 tanks, theology of tanks. Okay. Um, here we go. We're bringing, we're bringing, we're bringing a name yes. to, yes. to the tanks. Yes. Um, the tank but, but class let's, has let's a call name. It, let's call it philosophy of tanks. Okay. okay. So TNT 101. Wait, 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 Pot 101. Oh, oh come on. Yes. Okay. Story. There we go. Okay. Pot 101. Yep. Philosophy of tanks. Here okay? at the High uh, Tech Podcast. High Tech Podcast. Okay. We got a page of a thousand words. Um, let's say, you know what? Let's just say this. Okay. Let's say, let's get really specific. This page of a thousand words is the beginning instruction manual for the description of the different parts of a tank. Okay. So let's 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 put this on here, okay? Specifically a, a Panzer, words. you know, the, the, it's a it's a thousand yes, words exactly. for the Panzer. It's exact thousand words for the Panzer. We're in the Panzer module of P O T one hundred and one. P O T one hundred and one. Um. So okay, we're in, we're in this, and we got this page. Okay, let's just say you're the instructor. You wrote this up. You got this whole page, thousand words, several paragraphs describing the parts of a tank. Okay. So we're presented this. How, how do we work through this? So first of all, let's talk about what Will's talking about. So some people's reactions are to say, okay, well, if cognitive load is a problem, I'll take the thousand words and I'll, you know, we'll, we'll take the first like hundred or 200 and we'll drop that behind a button. That'll be, that'll be the first part of the Panzer tank. We'll talk about the bottom part of the Panzer tank first. That's a button oh, they click into. And then Josh, in the, in the little section in the middle where he lists the parts, why don't we do a video? Yes, absolutely. There Let's we do go. a video. Let's drop that video in in the middle one. So that gets, that breaks it up a little bit. And then we'll, we'll drop in another button for the top half of the Panzer tank. Clearly, Will and I have zero idea what parts are in a Panzer tank. Let's just be very, let's be very real here. About them. I know that it shoots something and that there's a seat somebody has to sit in, I think. There's a couple somewhere. seats. Somewhere, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. There's wheels or like a track. Track. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah, track, whatever. Um, so we we've done that. So we bring it out of buttons. Now, Will, what's what's your point? Be, somebody be like, well, Will, I broke I broke up the content. It's not all thousand right. words. Right? Didn't you once. tell me that a thousand words was the issue? Right? Yeah, like that's the issue. That's what's overloading them. So if I just break it up, it's fine. Why? Why, in your opinion, does that not fix the problem? And I'm just gonna be very open about this. I agree with Will. Let's just be <laughs> okay. I'm not saying this because I don't agree with him, but I think we need to like process this out loud because this is kind of the the issue we walk into a lot with uh, faculty and instructors trying to design stuff. If we're trying to in one page, and you know these these examples already break down because we couldn't even get all the parts of a tank in a thousand words. But that's what you think. I'm gonna pull it off. <laughs> These are the things we do in our spare time. What did you do Saturday night? Yeah, um, Saturday I wrote about a tank. <laughs> if I'm trying to communicate to a student, I want you to know these parts, 
right? Mm -hmm. Then the structures involved in teaching them those parts, the germane load of that is that there, there's ne not necessarily an, a system to one page, here's all the parts. Like that's literally like, I need you to learn the alphabet. Here's all the letters. It, it doesn't even say necessarily there's a, a sequence to the letters. It doesn't say that yeah. there's a nice wonderful song that will give you a melody and you can remember the letters to the tune right like no i've here's all the parts it's like vomit here's the parts figure them out there's no system to that there's no organization there's no clear path on how they should remember the memorize the parts yeah. or which parts are most important right it's just a all the parts in chunked up in these thousand words so the germane load there is i i don't know what's most important i i don't know which one's first oh, yeah. i don't know any of that because it's not clear. It's not, the button doesn't make it clear. You just tucked 250 words up under the button. Was that button? Was that button's worth of content like the introduction to tank seats? And that's the least important. So I hit it. Like, like, yeah. yeah you know, you don't need to know what's happening in a tank seat. Well, it's not going to be comfortable. You're like, in a tank. In it come to the extraneous part, like, did you actually solve the cognitive load problem? No, I think you kind of like just diverted it to a different. Right, way right. of cognitive load like okay maybe the big load of a thousand words was a problem but now it's like section one and the buttons they click in they learn about seats but what what if they go to section three and they need to know how this connects to seats right do you like do you link back over to the seat section do you have to bring like, the button you know, down reference? do you have a copy yeah, of the like button? reference back over to seats button this is the dumbest example we've ever had um <laughs> like go back but like it becomes a cognitive load issue because now they're bouncing back and forth they're trying while at the same time learning about the tank parts on top of trying to figure out how the heck they fit together because there are they're a thousand words of just describing it now on top of that they're thinking oh i gotta go back what did it say in seats right again like what so i jump back over to seats and then it's like well what did they you know what i'm just gonna open two tabs we have two tabs <laughs> open i'm gonna have one tab that seats one and then all of a sudden a thousand words are all on the screen again and they're just they're reading and ironically that that i love that you just pointed that out josh like students do this and we, we say it's an issue with tests right don't open a second tab i don't want you reading stuff whatever but like the the issue there is that the ex extraneous cognitive load of your page design is insufficient and so your students are coming up with a secondary method two tabs two screens two devices whatever it is to make a better learning experience for themselves that should be a red flag a flare a something right for you to say oh if my students are reporting that they need this to do that which they may not but some might you i've heard it from students right you need to go back and review your content for whether or not it's effectively laid out and if yeah. they're if the tools are in the way or helping the students learn yeah all and let's be very clear about something both will and i have failed at this multiple times oh, like i can think yeah. of multiple things i've done that have caused people to open multiple tabs or like just been a solution to like throw something into a button it's it this is not an easy solution you and you it's you're not going to get it perfect or no designer is going to get it perfect every time there's also sometimes you're just in a crappy situation with content that you need to figure out how to do, and you've only got a week to figure it out, and you like you do the best you can. Right. I, I'm in the middle of this. And you, you iterate it. I'm in the middle of this at work at the moment. Like It's actually something I'm wrestling with because my learning management system is troubling tr troublesome it's troublesome triggering it's... i would put i would put that mark on most big learning management systems sure. right now i'm just gonna sure. be up front but I, but how we've opinion. customized and delivered it makes it yeah. even worse um so it's moodle so so okay. that's what i right <laughs> kind of um i spent six hours trying to co recode the the home page manually by like Ooh. code it html css because the yeah so the issues right for some of my learners trying to get into my platform and trying to complete their their required experiences is that there are no appropriate extraneous cues to reduce that extraneous load like when they get into the platform they're left without any direction they don't know why or if they should hit certain buttons and some of this is some stuff i've i've put in there and it's been a you know again i didn't do it well and it's been a negative result but some of it's like leftover from others past and so i'm trying to make the best of what they did and trying to fix what i'm doing and all at the same time your learners i you know before they even get to your course my learners are having issues trying to navigate in and, and make the best of their experience yeah you know it's it's 
it's everywhere. Cognitive load and as a theory is so important to modern life and we don't even know it. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I think it's very important for teachers, uh, designers alike to work with this in mind. The lower, yeah. the lower you are, ta- or the less you are taxing your learners minds, their brains as they work through your content, the better, you know, have you ever received that email? I'm just so frustrated. I can't find it. That oh, is yeah. indicating that there's a cognitive load issue. They are at a frustration point. They have met some emotional trigger point that either the information is not there and they thought they could find it or the information is there and it's not put somewhere effectively for them to find it. That, that can just be syllabus stuff. That doesn't have to be an assignment. That doesn't even yeah. have to be, you know, group work. That can just be where is the button to submit my assignment. And sometimes yeah. we can control that stuff, but sometimes we can't. Sometimes we can't. Yeah, and we've had that happen. I mean, like, one of my criticisms of the LMS that we're in is that they provide multiple different ways to access activities. And now you can control that, and we've gotten to a point where we've tried to control it, and I think we're getting better at it. But it just it opens the door to, like, give a students 15 different ways to get to their activities, and they can't remember which way to get there. They start doing different ways, and then they miss content because the instructor put content somewhere else. Well, yeah, what if your related instructors to that activity. do it differently? Like, yeah, like what if instructors <laughs> that never happened? No. Um, <laughs> what? Um, but uh, so that issue. Now I want to come back here because we're coming to time to where we may have to talk about some other things. Um, but I I want to bring it back to to POT one hundred and one. Okay. So we talked about we talked about the negative, uh, some of the issues with the solutions. Will how would how would we fix this? Okay. So let's say yep. let's say we're brought thousand words on tank parts, and at the end of the day. The objective is, let's just say we've worked through this already. The objective is they need to understand how these part, what these parts are, what they do, okay, and how they come together to make the Panzer tank. How do we solve this problem? I, I want to jump on one idea because you're going to take it from me, so I want to I claim it as my own first because this is the immediate thing that we jump on. Why the frick is there not a graphic of the Panzer tank with all the parts? Why is the, the why did we describe it in to, words? <laughs> yeah, why did we describe it in words? So he, so here's the because thing because we're I think horrible really teachers, with. Josh. Why are we <laughs> yeah. making this course? We suck at this. <laughs> here's here's the thing. One of the things I think really helps cognitive load, at least for me, is to ask. Okay, what is the main goal, and what is the environment that they're gonna have to like look at this in? Like, what what's the end result okay so like for a panzer tank and parts even though will and i don't know what they are let's just say part a through 45 uh, <laughs> <laughs> well and, and, like, and uh i th- i think as this relates to cognitive load like I, again don't know the parts right but i'm gonna put them together in chunks we're gonna yeah. we're gonna put all the parts related to the wheels together we're gonna put all the parts mm-hmm. related to the firing or shooting mechanisms together. We're like that to me is the first, yeah. very, the very, very first. Well, thing however, the topics to do. come together, yeah, absolutely, are the things we need to do, and that's probably the way they go. Although somebody who built the tanks, like, dude, that is not the way you talk about <laughs> tank parts, and we're like, we know because we suck. Um, but I would, I group them together, and here's here's what I would do if I wanted them to learn the parts and how they work together. I'd maybe start with what you're talking about. Well, let's talk about like maybe a graphic of the wheel parts or the the shooting parts of the things that we know nothing about we we really don't know tanks um we we make a graphic maybe i'm gonna label parts right on the graphic but like what they are even include in that graphic actual text about maybe brief definitions about the parts right that i'm gonna give them um but i might have some other text with that uh actually no i'm not gonna have any other text it's just gonna be the image it's gonna be definitions what those parts are how they fit together and those pictures are slowly gonna be i'm dreaming this out right now okay sections of the different parts of the tank and will eventually come to a graphic later on that's the full tank all of it together right okay so that they've seen how things start to they've seen it in chunks and it eventually evolves to the larger thing which is that they need to understand how that fits together now clearly this is an engineering course right this is a tank engineering course even though it's it's philosophy of tanks 101 yeah um and so the, the 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 other element at an intrinsic level is to determine like what are they what are they working on most most uh, consistently or in their own work right like if these are engineers who are working on steering mechanisms then I'm going to ignore the firing mechanism 
I'm going to ignore the hatch. I'm going to ignore the backup lights. I, I'm assuming tanks have backup lights. Backup lights! Who knows? Right? I, I genuinely am not sure they do. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but we do need to focus on the treads, the steering wheel, the yeah. steering mechanism. Well, and, and here's the other thing, right? Like, So like, I think people's reactions are, let's take all that content. Even, even the images, Will, you and I are coming up with and the stuff we're doing and the grouping we're together, there's still something where it's like, okay, that's still a lot of information right. that I'm going to give them. So how am I going to break this up? Well, I think the other thing that we constantly ignore is the need for reflection. And that's how we get past some of the cognitive load. Like, is like, well, let's take some time to reflect. Here's and five so, parts. Review those. Yeah. And then stop. Five parts. Yeah, take a look. Here's the, here's the tread section we're going to reflect on. Maybe I'll even have, I will have like some way of breaking up where I take them to a small, like, you know, three questions. It's just like, Hey, what were these three parts? Right. Right. Like how did they fit together? And then we're going to move on to the next section. What's your existential building. response to treads? Like, there you yeah. go. You just Clearly, need the answer that's to a that. question you have to ask in, in <laughs> POT 101 uh, philosophy of tech. The point though, is you can see where we're getting at is that breaking up some of this is going to involve taking a look at what, how should they have to see it at the end of the day? Yeah. Like what, what is it that they're going to look at? How can I maybe bring in graphics or bring in some of this stuff to help break up some of that? And then also how can I build in reflection in the chunks of the content? How can I chunk out the content and then build in reflection, not just chunk it out. So it's now four pages of massive amount of content as opposed to one page. Um, how can I chunk it out so that I can build in points of reflection and consideration in between to kind of help give a break? Yeah. Um, to the constant digesting of content at the end of the day if you're concerned for cognitive load and you're doing an evaluation of something of your own work that's got a thousand words or or 20 slides or 10 minutes of video like you're you're looking at going this is too much the first thing you want to start assuming is how am i going to break this up that's it like yeah it, because at the end of the day right we have to teach our students all the content we expect to need to teach them to meet our learning objectives the, the issue that cognitive load re, um, raises is in what order and at how much of a content per, per order or per situation are we going to teach them? You know, I can't just teach them the entire tank in one lecture. We know that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to break it up into chunks. And that's the question that you, you want to work with is like, what is the most effective chunks? Which chunks need media? Which chunks shouldn't have media? Um, is there something going on though that's a part of your platform or the way you you need to talk about tanks that can maybe like you know technically uh, your voice is an element of cognitive load when it comes to a lecture you know and and this isn't anything you can necessarily uh, change some people maybe there's certain things you can have, you know, can affect but if your students can't hear you or if you're too loud or if you have the dry eye voice that no one what? can stay awake for everybody like, loves that voice right that's that those are things that all <laughs> these things play into teaching and learning they 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 play into cognitive load and we want to be careful you know and, and considerate about how we take advantage of the good things how we avoid giving too much mm -hmm. um and frankly there is no perfect course so you're always going to yeah. be looking at something that's going to be tweaking a little bit changing a little bit here move this around mm -hmm. you know oh I took out the thousand words. Well, I listened to Will and Josh. I got rid of the thousand words. I put in two videos. Great. And then those videos are 30 minutes each. Like you haven't solved anything, right? <laughs> but you thought that it was good, but maybe those videos yeah. now need to be a bunch of five minute videos. Like there's a lot of things that we get to learn there's, about this. Yeah. There's a bunch of different ways to tend to handling it. Is this clear um, as mud? Like seriously, is this clear as mud at this point? Have we made it so yeah. clear that it's just muddy? I think so. And useless. I think it's, we've obviously not progressed anywhere that's good i'm just joking. let's just start the episode no. over yeah hopefully found it helpful we might need to come back to another episode on cognitive load um but will you know what's great that's really great mud otters otters <laughs> otters. i love otters they're the dogs i, of the I sea. love otters i swear oh my gosh i should have picked otters as the animal i thought about that for this too. episode ah oh, i failed I failed. So with that slick transition. <laughs> as slick as an otter's coat. <laughs> as slick as an otter's coat. Um, the app we want to talk about today is called Otter. Uh, it's a, uh, I wish I could say it's going to help with cognitive load, but to, to be honest, it's just a cool app. And we picked it. For this 
said. Um, although it could maybe. Yeah, maybe I can think of some ways. Tied in. Yeah, we could we could think of some ways. Will, uh, this is as classic high tech podcast. Uh, one of one of your raps uh, I, that you threw I out on the list. This? No, this was you. Yeah, no, this is totally well, I mean, you. like it's. I know it's surprising because out of the apps we come up with, ninety percent of them are clearly me. Um, we need to do not... like an equity maps evaluation of <laughs> the podcast and like, all right, this I mean, is a Josh contribute... app. This is a Will app. This is a Josh app. This is a Will app. I mean, it's not that hard. I'll take my database and Notion, and we'll just start tagging the apps that we come up with, and I'll get us a, I'll get us a number. Um, I may have more apps, guys, but he uses Notion more than I've ever used any of the apps that I recommend. Yes. Uh, anyway, Otter, it's a, it's a cool app. You brought this across our table yep. uh, and uh, found it from a friend of ours, actually, uh, that was using it. So why don't you give us, give us a spiel, man? What's, what's Otter? Otter why should people care? is a personal transcription device uh, software. Um, it's actually really cool. It's got a lot more features than you would need maybe necessarily, but I, I came across this when a friend of mine, Dave was, um, interviewing me for, a, an assignment he was doing for work, uh, for school. This is probably the same difference. Work, school, whoever knows these days. Um, and we were doing the interview and he knew he needed to have like a transcription. He knew he had to have a recording, but like just a recording anymore is not searchable. Right. So we're sitting down at dinner. He pulls out his phone. He puts it on the table. Like, do you mind if I record this? Absolutely not. And, and he starts recording and I looked at it and it's, I could see my words coming up on it. I was like, dude, wait, 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 what are you using? And he tells me about Otter. He shows me what he's doing with this thing. This tool will live transcribe um, your conversations, anything you put into it. Uh, it is a freemium product. So you're going to imagine immediately there's some limits on how much you can do with the free product. It's actually really good. And that's why we would recommend it. Uh, when you yeah. pay, you can get as many hours, as many minutes as you want kind of thing. But uh, it's very simple. You turn it on. You start recording. It can keep track of persons, right? I don't remember if you can tell, like, you know, this is Dave, that's Will, and it can keep up with Dave and Will. But, like, it will track person one and person two. So when you get the transcription on the other side, it's not just a wall of text. It is the conversation. And it can keep track mm -hmm. of more than two voices, right? Uh, we were in a restaurant, as I mentioned, right? And so it was able to pick up people that were passing by and stuff, and it would notice them as different voices than my voice and Dave's voice and would put them as a third person and a fourth person. So it's really powerful for that purpose. I think for like teaching and learning, you could obviously have your students use this for interviews. Clearly that's what this was. Mm -hmm. That's how it came across my desk. Uh, but you can have students use this to do like reflections and things like that. Um, you know, we've ironically here where we've highlighted equity maps in the past, which is a really cool tool for like determining the equity of conversations in classrooms. Well, that's like an audio based thing and you have to interact with it. You could use this to have someone do like a recording of a 30 minute conversation and then do an evaluation of how people work, uh, how people talk to each other just by the text amount and do like, you know, word counting and things like that between people. Lots of really cool opportunities with this one, but it's free. It's uh, on your desktop, uh, Android, Apple. Really easy to get it, really easy to use it. You are limited to 30 minutes at a time for free. So if you need to record an hour, you would need to record two sections or you have to pay up and unlock, you know, like the, it's like a four hour yeah. limit or something. If you can, if you pay for now, it. it is worth mentioning, Will, I've been, I've been trying to look this up because I remembered this when we first looked at it and we didn't pull it up before we started doing the episode. They do have an education plan. Oh, um, I forgot to mention this, that you and I found this because we sent your friend had to accidentally, yeah. Didn't he have to upgrade because yeah. he was, it was over yeah. 30 minutes. They didn't realize there, there is an education plan. I can't for the life of me actually find, I found it. It's at the bottom of the page of the pricing. It's under like an FAQ click down. Is there a discount for students and teachers? Yes. We offer a great discount for students. That's that's what it yeah. says. <laughs> I just, I can't find what the discount is. Um, I'm literally on, they have a page for it. Do you have an account? It just says con you have an account, right? Contact Go in. sales. Yeah, I do. I tried doing that. I'm, a, I'm like oh, three steps you, ahead of where you were at. <laughs> cool. Cool. We won't do this yeah, live for the, the listeners. We'll, we'll follow up. Yeah, we'll follow up in the, the page. But anyway, there's plans for it. I think what's really cool to what Will said, like, we've done some testing, messed around with it. It's it's really cool that it's just like you mentioned that it just, it transcribes so quickly and it looks pretty accurate. Like, it picked us up, like, me talking pretty quickly and and pulled exactly what I was saying. And what's really cool is it's got mobile apps, uh, like we've mentioned, 
um, both for iOS and Android and a Chrome extension, which is kind of cool. We haven't actually tested that out, but I could definitely get behind that. Um, but then I can access that recording from anywhere. I can access it in the app. I can access it in my web browser. Um, and, uh, it's just really useful. I could definitely see like both from, I think uh, cognitive load piece, uh, maybe not trying to have to remember everything everybody's saying when you're taking notes, like Otter would be a great solution for that. Like you said, interviews, meeting things, there's, there's integration with zoom at the higher levels that you pay for, which is kind of cool that you can actually transcribe meetings and webinars and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a simple tool. Um, but it's definitely one that I think I've seen a lot of transcription tools and there are a lot that don't deliver on their promises or they're so um, expensive, like or they're really insanely expensive. expensive. Even their like basic plan is not that bad. It's no. like hundred bucks a, little a year eight bucks a month. Yeah. yeah. It's like a hundred bucks a year, which if you were going to use this a lot would not be like that is pennies compared to some of the other tools that provide this. Yeah. Type Cause of some feature. of the transcription tools that do like, like here's your, you know, I send you my video and then you transcribe it. They, they charge you like a, a I, this might be over, over exaggeration, but like a dollar a minute, you know, like it's, it's that kind of fee structure. Mm -hmm. So however many minutes you could still be pretty cheap. It was a five minute video. Right. But like if you need continued transcription services, I could see this being great for someone going through their doctorate. How many times mm -hmm. did Justin have a conversation with me or I see stuff he was doing with his doctor at work where he needed a recording or a transcription of what he was doing so he could code it and stuff like this. I know he found apps at that time. He had worked, did workarounds and he did free trials and this, that, and the other thing. But like, seriously, while you're doing your doctorate to just pay a hundred bucks a year, it's not, it's not like you mm -hmm. want to spend more money, but you could have this the whole way through and be able to use this as a part of that learning process. Be fantastic. Yeah. Well, and they have systems in it too. They have like a folder system and a way you can organize all this stuff and, so like it, it would create a pretty cool system. And it, one of the things I thought was cool is I think it's one of their pro features that you can actually integrate it with like other storage apps, like Dropbox connects to it. That's sweet. Um, so that you can like sync folders and things like it's something you may be saying, like, why would I want to do that stuff? But like that, like to your point, like in doctoral research or even like any kind of research you're doing, it, like you have to look through all this stuff a lot of times. And like, I could see that being very helpful if I was going to use Dropbox like a back end for where I store all the documents and things I'm doing. I could have this tool automatically drop in all the transcriptions that I get from and recordings I have from interviews and, and things like that. That could be very helpful. And the fact is you can also import information into here and files and have that generate transcripts for that information too, like videos and audio, which is uh, really helpful too. So I, I definitely think there's a lot that this tool could do. Um, again, it's not like some of the other tools we've we've picked where it's like they have so many different uses. Right. This or is a transcription it's, app. <laughs> it's a transcription app. Okay. If that's um, what but you it's need. a solid one. So if you're looking for something like that, Otter is definitely, uh, I think, uh, something you should check out. Uh, and again, just go to otter.ai uh, and uh, you can check out what they're doing on there. It's not pronounced yeah, otter. Yeah. Dot I? Um. Well, you know. Uh, you don't have to say dot i no it's, it's not because it's not ai like dot us when you put ai together with nothing else i i don't know of a word <laughs> that we say that is just like i i mean we got to save like, this debate for another day my friend yeah take us to the, take us on the outro let's let's uh let's get done um anyway so uh thank you though guys uh for another episode uh next episode we're gonna be interviewing uh sean adams from uh irad whoop, whoop. um whoop, whoop. who is uh joined us for an episode it's really cool we've talked about irad before in the podcast um sean uh connected with will um and uh we are going to uh connect with him in this episode and kind of talk with his experience of how he's been a part of the irad team and just kind of how IRED came to existence. So if you like that IRED episode, check out this one because you learn a lot more about how the tool actually functions and just the background of how IRED came to be and even what IRED stands for. Um, we That's get into right. that on that episode. That's so right. Check it out. Um, so, uh, and again, just a reminder, check us out at High Tech Podcast on Twitter. Shoot us an email inbox at hightechpod.us and check out our website, hightechpod.us to check out some more resources. Yes. <laughs> we don't got time for that. Uh, again, thank you everybody for joining us for another week as we try to figure out how we harness that technology um, for the classroom, whether online or in person. Thank you again. See ya. See ya.